Now, this starts to get more tricky when you have a look at these other ones, right? So I think from memory, you've got one that says xy equals 6. Has anyone put it into Desmos yet? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, if you haven't already, like, Zanaki, please put it in. xy equals 6. Does anyone remember the name of this shape? It has a name. It's a hyperbola, right? x, y equals 6. Might look a little more familiar in this form. y equals 6 divided by x. I divided both sides by x. Right? So, um, oh, sorry, this is really messy. So I'd encourage you, by the way, Desmos has drawn this for you, but I'm still going to encourage you to um, just do your own rough drawing, like a small one in your book, because obviously you're going to shut your computer down and you want to know where did this answer come from, right? Um, so x, y? Yep. x, y equals 6. This is the one we're looking at. I think it looks something like this, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now here's where it starts to get more interesting, right? What values of x, let's just think about x for a minute, so it's horizontal. What values of x can we put in? What values can't we put in? Anyone want to suggest? Yeah, go ahead. We can't put zero because of the Yeah, okay. Hold on a second. There was a lot in that answer, right? I can't put in, don't forget x equals zero, it's a vertical line. Right? There's x equals zero. You can't put x equals zero in because when you put in x equals zero, what happens? You're dividing by zero. And just like before, your calculator is going to have a fit and say, you can't do that. You're going to break the, break the rules of the universe. Right? So we're not allowed to go there. Um, we heard this word, this special word, right? this asymptote thing. This is a part of the graph that we get closer and closer and closer to, but we never exactly get there, which is why you can see I sort of taper off before I reach it. Okay? So therefore, when I say the domain, right? Zach, did you have a question or a suggestion? Say, yeah, go for it. It could be literally any value other than zero. It could be any value other than zero. In fact, I'm actually going to write that down because I think it's such a clear answer. Any value except for, whoops, This is a totally acceptable way to write this answer, okay? But just like before, it might sort of seem to you quite long and wordy, right? Now, just look up for a minute and don't write this down, but I want you to watch what I'm doing. Here's how not to answer this question. X can't equal zero, right? X can be any value except for zero, so X can't equal zero. Now it's tempting to write that, it's succinct, it seems to capture all the information that you want. The only problem is, think back, what does domain mean? What was the definition I gave you before, right? It's all the x values where the function exists, yeah? Can I say that again? The domain is all the x values where the function exists. This is the x value where the function exists doesn't exist, right? It's the opposite. So if you asked me what my favorite food was, and I said to you, I hate durian, because I do, and if you don't know what it is, count yourself lucky, but it's a smelly fruit that's spiky, and it fell, if it fell on you, you would die. If I told you that, I haven't answered the question, have I? I've not told you what my favorite food is. You have not told me what the domain is. You actually have to provide me more information than that, okay? Now, if you, I'm getting rid of it because it's wrong. If you don't want to use quite so many words, here's another way you could say it. X can be less than zero, right? This is X is less than zero, over here to the left. Or X could be more than zero. That's from here to the right. And that's it. Do you notice what's conspicuously absent from my inequality signs? What's missing? Yeah, it's the, it's the equal to bit, or the equal to bit. I'm deliberately leaving it off. I'm excluding it. Does that make sense? So this answer is like everything to the left, everything to the right, well, miss it out. Again, why is it x is greater or... Yeah, what do these mean? No, yeah. why, no, why is it on that graph? Why is it like For this graph here, yeah. So if I try some x values, so long as they're bigger than 0, I can put them into this and I'll get some answers out. Right? Like, for example, here. Um, pick a value that's bigger than 0. Anyone, shout out an answer. Any number you like. 4. Four. <laughs> You're going to get 1.5. So you have a y value, it works. Give me another one. Another value bigger than 0. Three. I had three. That's two. I'm going to get values. I can put in eight. I can put 0 0.4. I can put anything I like. So long as it's bigger than zero. Does that make sense? I can do if it's negative two. 
Ah, good question. This is the concept I was telling you about. I'm so glad you asked. When I say here's x equals zero, as I start looking at what these numbers are, right? Actually, do this with me. If you were to label your axes, what might you label these as? One, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Right. So these are all the numbers bigger than zero. So that's why I'm going off to the right. Does that make sense? Bigger, greater than, going that way. Lesser than is over here. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. You get the idea. Lesser than means go to the left. Okay, in the context of horizontals. Okay. Do you think you could answer for me what the range is? Range is about up and down, right? And it's basically the same, isn't it? It's got the same problem. Um, we call it an asymptote, right? A place where the, the graph gets closer and closer. It doesn't quite get there. So I'm going to write it very similar for range with one subtle difference. Instead of x's, y's. Y is less than 0 or y is greater than 0. OK? All right, now, you're starting to see, OK, I, I get this, right? I can see there are some patterns here. I don't have to keep on drawing this thing. I can actually just look at the way this is written. See how there's an x on the denominator? That means you can't divide by 0. So x is not allowed to be 0, right? So on your table there, let me help you work this out. We've got the top done. The coordinates, they're the x's and the y's. Uh, the axes are horizontal and vertical. The values where the function exists, the name we give to these things are domain and range. Okay? So it's kind of nice, just coincidentally, um, everything ends up being in alphabetical order. right? So domain comes first, then range, x and then y. Okay? So now when you have a look at the bottom here, right? to work out domain and range, uh, it's usually easy to think about the places that break down, the places where it stops working. So we've already noticed, for example, uh, square roots. Square roots. What would you write in there? Right? When you see a square root like this guy, we're not allowed to take the square roots of negative numbers, right? So I would say, whatever is underneath the square root can't be negative. Okay? In fact, that's, that's why I've given you such a big space in the box there. That's what I would write. Whatever is underneath the square root is not allowed to be negative. Okay? Um, so that's square roots. Uh, quadratics, we start off with this guy, right? Now, how could we work out the domain and range without having to draw this thing, right? Well, what I would say is, whenever you have something squared, right? This is what I'd put in that box. The smallest a square can be, if you have something like x squared, the smallest value that can take on is 0. right? If you square something, whether it's positive or negative, the smallest it's going to be is 0. right? If you take a really teeny tiny number and you square it, it'll still be a bit above 0. right? So can you see when you have a look at this, right? the smallest this part can be is 0. So that means you're 5. And above, do you see how I got the range out of that? This squared part, the smallest it can be is 0, so I always have to be above that. Um, I'm going to leave off the, the rest of those to see what you would conclude, right? If you have a rational function, that's like, uh, oh, like C, like this one, where you've got something divided by something else. That's rational numbers are fractions, right? Your denominator, your denominator is not allowed to be what? What are we not allowed to divide by? Zero, right? You can't divide by zero, so that's why I would write under there. The logs and the exponentials, we might come back to those, but you could graph those using Desmos, and you can look, and maybe you can tell me where the domain and range are allowed to be. Okay?